up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory School of Embrini. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button over here and click that little bell as well. That way you'll be notified each and every time we upload new content. Today we're going to be doing a review of an underwater scooter system. Now for us divers, that's a DPV, a diver propulsion vehicle. This was actually sent to us by a lady named Mandy. And she actually sent me an email here and asked if I'd ever, first of all, heard of an underwater scooter and asked if I'd be interested in testing one of their products. Uh, she says this is new to the market. It's designed for scuba diving, snorkeling, free diving, and even swimming. It's got a 50 meter range. Uh, MSRP is around $689. Um, it says there's other cheaper models for around $399. And she just asked if we do some tests. Now she did further explain in her email, this is a demo model. So when you see close-ups of this or a little bit of B-roll footage, you're gonna notice it does have scuffs in it, it does have some paint chipping on it, uh, but it is a demo model, so it is what it is. But it looks like it came with a charger. Uh, this is a carry bag. We do have a leash here so you can lash it to you. It does come with a book of instructions. Now these are in Chinese, but as you flip through it, it's actually got about four or five different languages and I'm sure hopefully somewhere it's got, there's some English there. So yeah, it does got some English in it as well. Here's the box that it came in. It's gonna give us a little bit more information as well. It says it's about 8.15 pounds. Um, it's got 164 foot maximum depth rating on it, which for a unit like that is phenomenal. Uh, it says it's got two speeds, a low speed and high speed runtime on it. It's only about 25 minutes on the high speed, 45 minutes on the low speed. Um, it's got a GoPro light, it's got a child safety lock, so that's pretty cool. Um, and operating temperatures up to 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, it does have a 6300 uh, milliamp and 22.2 .2 volts and charge time about one and a half hours. So we're gonna take a quick look at just some of the features of this real quick and then we're going to charge it. We're gonna take it over to a confined water area. We're gonna play with it in the pool a little bit and then we're actually gonna take it out on an, an, a real dive and try to get in a current and just see how well this thing will actually hold up. So the first thing I noticed, there is a little bit of debris in here where the props are. Uh, she did say that this was basically a demo model, so maybe it's been used before. Um, I noticed there's two activation switches here. I can see the GoPro mount, so you can mount a light or a GoPro there. Uh, ergonomically designed, it's actually not that bad. It actually feels good. Um, compared to a general DPV, I'm not sure how well it's going to hold up though. Uh, I am curious to see if this is going to be neutrally buoyant in the water, if it's going to be negative or even positive, because that's going to make a big difference as far as what use a diver is going to have for it. My first impressions is, I think this is going to be more just for swimmers or snorkelers or maybe even free divers. I'm not so certain that a scuba diver would actually have much benefit, you know, say at any, any great depth. So we'll test that out as, as well, just to see how it holds up. I'm trying to find the battery compartment on here. I'm assuming it's this one, but it looks like there's vent holes here. Um, I'm not sure how well a, a battery is going to hold up with vents in it. So there's the battery. Yep. And so the vent. So I'm assuming that the battery is 100% waterproof. It would have to be because the battery compartment is not. Looks like we have a waterproof connection here. I'm uh, going ahead and make the assumption that is where we uh, charge the battery at. So. Let's see if we can get it out. Yep, so it just actually pulls right out here and it looks like it unscrews to put the charger in. So I'm actually shocked though because I can actually see internally, I'm not sure if the camera will pick this up, I can see internally in here and I can see wires and it looks like I can even see part of the board itself. So that is very, very odd that this is not sealed. Uh, I'm just not, and it looks like it's still wet from when it was shipped to us. So. I'm not sure how that's going to hold up. First impressions are not doing very well at this point. Let's get this back on. We'll get this thing charged back up here shortly. Um, here on the side, you'll notice that, or on the handles, we've got two little switches. This one has a small fan and a big fan. I'm assuming that's the throttle. So you got low speed and high speed there. And then we've got unlock and lock. So I'm assuming that's what the child safety lock is. Um, so there it's unlocked. There it's locked. So yeah, that actually locks it. Uh, I'm also curious to see uh, if I can just press one button and the lights coming on back here when I press one button, but nothing's happening. Probably got to press them both. 
press them both, it actually comes on. Now I'm a little concerned about that as well. Typically speaking with a DPV, if I've got it clipped to a scooter ring, I wanna be able to operate it with one hand, keep one hand free to do whatever I need to. Um, so having to press that with both hands, once again, for a diver, I'm not sure how well that's gonna be. But now that we kind of see what it is, let's get this thing charged up, take it over to the pool and see how it does. All right guys, so we're here at our training pool and we're just gonna be doing some free diving stuff with it first and we're gonna be using the, the low throttle and the high throttle to see how long it lasts, to see how much force it actually has or how much thrust it actually has underwater. Um, this is actually my business partner just doing some free diving techniques. Uh, we're gonna be testing also uh, the speed of it, see how long it goes from one end of the pool to the next. Um, and then we will graduate into uh, scuba gear. We're gonna be testing it in a wetsuit and a dry suit, an aluminum cylinder and a steel cylinder. Uh, if, if this DPV is being advertised as one for scuba divers, we wanna test it in, in all types of scenarios just to see how well it does. Um, Dad's actually pretty agile with this thing. It's pretty cool. I think this would be great for some of our fr uh, free diving students and even our mermaid students. I think it's a great unit for that. I'm still a little concerned it's just not gonna hold its own when it comes to uh, divers wearing 50 to 100 pounds worth of gear. So we'll see how it does. But yeah, our, our mermaid students would absolutely love this by all means. All right, so now we're gonna test and see how long it takes him to go from one end of the pool to the next. Um, this pool is 75 feet long or 25 yards. And once his feet goes by the camera, it would actually be the length of the pool here. It's not too shabby, about 12 seconds to go 75 feet. It's really not that bad for a little unit. There he's just testing it. We can see it immediately floats to the top. It's just as soon as he lets go of it, it does float up to the top. So we know the unit's gonna be positively buoyant. Um, we're actually gonna switch divers now. We're gonna switch to one of our dive masters. He's wearing a steel 120 with a dry suit. And we're gonna see what it does to pull him through. Uh, he does have it on the low throttle setting right now. And it kind of looks like it's struggling a little bit to pull him through the water, especially with the gear he's wearing. He's got a steel 120, a five pound steel plate, uh, probably another 15 pounds worth of weight, and then he's got his dry suit and his undergarments on. So it's not looking too good for that, that more advanced or technical diver to be using this thing. Yeah, he's definitely struggling a little bit to get it to pull him through the water. So now he's actually switched over to the high throttle and it still appears to, like he's he's struggling a little bit to get it to pull him through the water. Um, you know, my first impression is this, is it's gonna be great for that swimmer, for that free diver, for that snorkel, or even now just seeing it, the our, our mermaid students. But as far as the diver goes, I, I'm not sure if I would be comfortable using this thing um, just because it, I don't believe it's actually designed for that. It's advertised for that, but I just don't see for a diver that it's actually advertised. You know, it's, it's not really meant for that. Now we're switching back over to my dad. He's got an aluminum 80 on. Um, he's got just a, a uh, real thin suit on and it's pulling him around. He's on, he's on, looks to be the full throttle. And we can already see that the battery's blinking there. It's letting us know that it's just about at the end of its life cycle there. It's gonna need to be charged. And by the time this footage was shot, we've already been playing with it for about 20, 25 minutes. And that's both on low throttle and high throttle. So to say that this unit's actually gonna be good for a diver, I can't really say that because they advertise 25 to 45 minutes of runtime, um, and we barely got 25 minutes out of it switching back and forth. Just doing a little maneuvers here. Ooh, looks like he smashed that GoPro. Let's watch that again. Ah, oh. well, now that we've completely demolished one GoPro camera with this uh, underwater scooter. Let's take it out to open water and let's see how it does in open water. All right, I'm at a place called Manatee Springs. This is in north, the north end of Florida. Um, we chose this site just because such the, the high flow rate of water that comes through the mouth. Uh, we wanted to see what it would do if we were geared up safe for cave diving. 
uh, just to see how it would fight a, a real current, if you will. Um, there you can just see the bubbles as I'm exhaling. That current's just ripping coming through here. I chose to use my side mount gear because if I'm going into a cave, that's what I'm going to be wearing. Uh, and I, I gotta be honest, I'm actually very impressed that the scooter is holding up as good as it is. Um, it is on a full uh, battery charge here. And even though I'm not actually cutting through that current, it is actually holding me in position, which is very impressive. Um, it's actually doing performing better than I actually thought it would. Uh, but could I say it's performing enough that I'd ever use this in a real scenario? Absolutely not. I can't say that at this point. We're going to change divers here and uh, see how he does. I was in aluminum 80s in side mount. He's in a uh, steel 100 and aluminum plate. And let's see how it does against the current. Yeah, it, it you know, even in full throttle, it looks like he's having the same issues that we are. Um, it's just not cutting through that current. It's actually holding him in place. Once again, that's that's very impressive in my eyes for the unit that it is, but it, it's just not cutting him through. I can't really recommend this unit to a serious diver, to an advanced diver, maybe on a wreck or something like that, or even to a cave diver. It's just not going to be worthwhile. You need a true DPV if you're going to be doing that type of diving. Yeah, he's just, he's struggling. I just don't see it working in a, in a real scenario if you're completely geared up. I'll let Michael give it a try here and I mean you can just look at his hair there, look at his bubbles, you can tell how, how fast that current's just ripping through there and it's just kind of holding him in place. Which is impressive for what it is, but for diving. Alright, we're going to do another little stress test. We're going to see if it'll pull two divers. I'm going to have Michael grab on to my fins here. And you know, we've, we've been testing this product probably 15 minutes in open water now. So it's getting close to its, its run time and we've been running it at full throttle. So let's see how it does pulling two divers along. We're gonna simulate say a rescue scenario here. Seems to be pulling us along quite easily actually. Michael is kicking just a little bit, but Actually kind of impressed how well it's doing here, so. Seems to be pulling us pretty easily. And like I said, we've been testing it probably 15, maybe going on 20 minutes now, and it's pulling us around pretty easily. So I'm not sure why in the pool we didn't get but 25 minutes of run time on it, because we were testing both high throttle and low throttle, but here in open water, we've only used a high throttle, and. I gotta be honest with you, it's it's performing very well. All right guys, here's my final thoughts on this little Trident underwater scooter, if that's what you wanna call it. For divers, I, I've gotta give it a, a one out of 10. It's not really meant for scuba diving in my opinion. I think the manufacturers of this kinda of jumped the gun by saying that it was, uh, because any diver with any type of experience is gonna need more than 25 minutes of run time, even on a coral reef. Um, it's definitely not meant for cave diving or any type of wreck diving or anything like that. It's just not going to hold up to the current and cut through the current the way you need it to. Now, with all that negativity being said, I am very impressed with what it actually did. I think we tested it beyond what its capabilities were. And for a swimmer, for a snorkeler, maybe for a free diver, the unit's actually phenomenal. I think our uh, mermaid students that we teach here, I think they would absolutely love this because they're gonna be very agile. It's gonna be able to uh, pull them through the water with ease. Um, and, and I'll give it at least an eight out of 10 stars as far as that goes. But on the diving, I'm gonna give it a one out of 10 because I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't think that the manufacturer really thought it through when they were gonna make that. There's several flaws, one being of course, takes two hands to operate. I don't really like that. If I've got this thing, say, tied off to a, uh, a crotch D-ring, I need to be able to have one hand free to do whatever while I'm still operating the unit. So I definitely don't like that. I don't like that the battery compartment itself is open um, because we saw those wires in there, we saw the board in there, and I just don't like the water being around that much electricity. So I definitely don't like that. The one and a half hour charge time, I gotta give it credit there. I really like that. It's a pretty quick charge. Um, and I like the mount that is pre-attached to here. Although I will state this, with the mount, 
your camera's gonna be upside down, so whenever you edit footage, you're gonna have to flip that camera back to the right side up in the post um, editing part. But I do like that it's on there and I don't have to buy any additional accessories, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, all in all, if I had to give it a, a, a zero to a 10 rating, uh, because this was advertised for scuba diving, and even though we had some great results in just our free diving test and our swimming test, I got to give it maybe a four out of 10. Now that's not a very high rating, but please understand I'm doing that on the scuba diving rating, not just the snorkeling and swimming, because I think the way it's advertised, um, it, it's just not going to hold up for what we actually use a DPV or diver propulsion vehicle uh, for while diving. But other than that, if you want to pick up a unit like this for swimming, snorkeling, free diving, or mermaiding, absolutely go get one. It's going to be great for you. But scuba divers beware, definitely pick up a real DPV and not one of these units here. Guys, we really hope you enjoyed our review of the Trident Underwater Scooter. I think personally it's going to be great for snorkelers or swimmers or free divers or even mermaids, but for our scuba diving customers out there, I think you might want to look at a little bit more powerful option and something that's going to have a little bit more runtime. But hey, if you've got a product out there that you'd like for us to test, how about sending us an email to lakehickoryscuba at gmail.com. We'll set up some terms with you and we will definitely be glad to test out your product. If you want to see some other great videos, make sure you check these links out over here. We think that you'll find them in interesting and educational as well. And if you hadn't already hit that subscribe button, dive on in, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click that little bell as well. That way you'll be notified each and every time we upload new content. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.